Have you ever gotten a notice that looks like this? It looks like a scam, right? It looks like it can't possibly be true. But this is a notice of a class action settlement. And there's actually a very good chance that this is on the level. And it's possible that you stand to make some money off of it, or at least get something of value. But you'd be forgiven if you thought that this was complete nonsense, because I mean, just look at it. Look, lawyers are good at writing things down. They are not great at graphic design. But the biggest question is, what do you do when you get a notice like this? How do you know if it's real? Well, as it happens, your favorite bird lawyer has actually litigated and settled countless numbers of class action settlements worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So let's talk about the good, the bad, and the extremely ugly about class action lawsuits. And most importantly, what you should do if you get a notice of class action settlement. So join me as I spill some legal tea. Sponsored by Trade Coffee. So this is no joke. I really did receive this notice of class action settlement related to an Epic Games lawsuit. Apparently at some point I played either Fortnite or Rocket League and I might be entitled to some money or some benefits as a result of this settlement. It makes sense because I will never get that time that I spent on Fortnite back. So I would really, really like to be compensated for that. And the things that we're gonna talk about today will relate to this particular class action lawsuit, but it should apply to just about any class action notice that you receive. So let's first talk about what is a class action suit? Because this is one of the most misunderstood things in all of law. Generally, when you have a lawsuit, you personally sue somebody else because the dollar amounts in question are worth getting compensation for what you think you were wronged over. But a class action is the opposite of that. It's where a lot of people were probably harmed in very, very small ways that it would never make sense for them to individually file suit. But instead, if you wrap all of them together, the class of people, all of those people who are in the same situation can get compensation compensation from a company or another individual. And when you group them all together, it makes it worthwhile to file suit. Part of it is a punitive reason. We don't want companies to engage in misbehavior that they'd never otherwise be punished for because simply the individuals would never think to hire their own personal attorney. So every state and the, the federal system has laws on the books to allow people to file a class action. And a class action gets this reputation that's sort of like RICO. If you file a class action, then it's a super, super serious serious lawsuit. And a class action can deal with large dollar amounts, especially because you're aggregating a whole bunch of claims. But just because it's a class action doesn't mean that it's necessarily a super scary or super nasty lawsuit. Sometimes class actions settle for hundreds of millions of dollars. Sometimes they go to trial and sometimes they're simply dismissed and no one gets anything. But the most important thing to remember about a class action is that it requires a class, a group of people who suffered a similar injury, that all of their injuries and all of the things that happen to them are very, very similar because a court is not going to engage in a class action if it has to individually look at every single person. If the calculation that goes into the damages for each individual person is different, it's probably not likely to give rise to a class action. The class has to be very similar. The damages that they suffered have to be very similar and it has to be easy for the court to ascertain all of these things together because they're dealing with potentially hundreds, thousands, and sometimes even millions of people. So imagine if you will, a person runs into a crowd and just starts punching people. Now, it could be that that person has punched a hundred people in that crowd. And you might think that could give rise to a class action, but probably not because maybe one person was punched in the stomach. One person was punched in the face. One person suffered a, a broken bone and one person was barely damaged at all because all of those injuries are so fact specific. That's not the kind of thing that gives rise to a class action. Well, on the other hand, let's look at something that could be easily adjudicated as a class action. Let's imagine that there's a big cell phone provider and let's say that they improperly put a $1 fee on your bill that shouldn't be there. And let's say they bill that out to a million customers. Well, it's really easy to ascertain those people. You just look at the spreadsheet of what people were charged, what fees, and the damages are all the same. It's just that one extra fee that shouldn't be there. That's exactly the kind of fact situation that's likely to give rise to a valuable and valid class action lawsuit. So now let's turn to this Fortnite and Rocket League lawsuit and use that as an example of what happens when a class action 
has filed. And here, because this court case has already gotten to the settlement stage, all the documents are helpfully displayed right on the court settlement website. And yes, this website is legitimate. It's not meant to look good. It's just meant to be legally sufficient. So uh, what the plaintiffs originally alleged is that the makers of Fortnite and Rocket League uh, engaged in some unfair business practices. And in particular, if you dig into the complaint, what you'll see is that the plaintiff alleged that a lot of miners entered into transactions on these video games and weren't allowed to back out of these transactions because they were miners. And it also alleges some other unfair business practices, as well as some claims related to random loot crates and people spending a thousand virtual dollars on loot crate related things. We'll never know if that was in fact true or not, because one of the benefits of settlement is that you don't have to go through the expense of discovery and the whole trial to get to the truth of the matter asserted. You can just settle and say that you're not admitting anything or you're not admitting faults if you're the defendant. And here the parties engaged in litigation, but eventually came to the conclusion that it was in everyone's best interest to settle the claims instead of spending money on the litigation. Now, when you come to that conclusion, uh, it's not as easy as just signing on the dotted line. In fact, uh, both the plaintiffs and the defendants have to go to the court to get the court to sign off on the settlement itself. It has to be court approved. The court has to make sure that the class of people are actually being fairly compensated and that everything else is on the level. Now, in addition to that, you have to determine certain things like what is the class. And here, based on the notice, it says that you are a member of the settlement class if at any time between July 1st, 2015 and February 25th, 2021, you had a Fortnite or Rocket League account that you used to play either game on any device in any mode and A, exchanged in-game virtual currency for any in-game benefit or B, made a purchase of virtual currency or other in-game benefit for use within Fortnite or Rocket League. So if you fit that description, you're entitled to some relief from the court. And if you look at the settlement agreement, the lawyers estimate that there are approximately 12 million people who have accounts who played the games and uh, fit that description across both Fortnite and Rocket League. And now we get to the part that everyone is waiting for. What could you possibly get out of this settlement? Well, here the defendants have agreed to spend up to $26.5 million, but that's unfortunately not what the class is going to get. And here's where things get a little bit ugly and where I'm afraid we're going to have to spill a little bit of legal tea. Because the thing is, the plaintiff's lawyers are not only negotiating on behalf of the class of people who were injured, but they're also negotiating on behalf of themselves because they're going to get a cut of this payout. Sometimes that payout might be 10% of the class payout. Sometimes it might be 50 or 60% of the class payout. But the good news is that the court is supervising all of this and they're trying to make sure that the lawyers aren't taking too, too much from the class settlement. Look, the lawyers have to get paid. If it weren't for them, these suits would never be filed. But there's a fine line between being compensated fairly for your time and also just getting a huge windfall. But in addition to the plaintiff's lawyers, there's also the class representative. To be able to file a class action, you have to have an individual who represents the rest of the class class fairly. And that person or individuals also need to be compensated. Generally, they're not paid all that much, maybe five to $10,000 at most. And sure, that's a lot of money, but your average class representative is going to put in a lot of work. They're probably going to need to be deposed. They'll have to talk to the lawyers and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. So in the grand scheme of things, the payout for the class representative is usually not a huge amount as represented by the total payout. So how much will the class actually get? Well, that depends on how many people actually take up the settlement because it's a bit of a moving target. The more people that sign up for the class action, the less each individual gets. And believe me, the fact that I'm making a video about this is going to give the lawyers who are in charge of the settlement, both on the defense and the, the plaintiff side, a complete heart attack because now I've publicized this suit and the uptick on the number of people who are going to ask for a class payment is probably gonna go through the roof. So sorry guys. So what will any individual class member get as a result if they participate in this class action? Well, you have to look at the settlement agreement, but they might be able to get a maximum of $50. Depends on what kind of damages you suffered, or you have the option to receive payment in virtual dollars, V-Bucks on Fortnite or Rocket League, up to a maximum of 13,500, which they estimate to be worth about $100 uh, if you have to purchase them in game. Now, of course, the virtual dollars are not actually worth $100 to the game manufacturers, 
dollars, despite the fact that that's how much it might cost you if you wanted to buy them. Uh, so they would much rather you uh, take your settlement payment in the form of the virtual dollars instead of an actual cash payment. So people who are members of this putative class have a couple of options. They can go to this website, they can sign up and they can say that they actively want the additional benefit of either the cash or the virtual dollars as part of a payment for this class action lawsuit. People of course can do nothing as well. <laughs> that's what most people do. They look at these emails and these notices and they think that this is a complete scam. Uh, they don't want to provide their personal information and they just simply do nothing. And this particular settlement uh, provides that if they don't do anything, they will at least get a thousand virtual dollars. Theoretically, also, you could write in to the settlement administrator and you could say that you don't want to participate in this settlement agreement and you can exclude yourself from the class. The main benefit there is that regardless of what happens in the class, you might be able to file suit on your own behalf, but you'd never want to do that because the dollar amounts are way, way too small. And additionally, you can also attend the hearing on this settlement agreement because right now we're in the preliminary approval stage. The court has looked at this settlement. Uh, both the plaintiffs and the defendants are advocating that the court should approve this settlement, but they need more information. They need to know how many people are going to sign up for the class. They need to know how many people object, how many people don't want to be included in this class, because if there are too many people who reject the settlements, then the court might have to tell the parties to go back to the drawing board. And here's one of the craziest things. Sometimes if too many people sign up for the benefits of the settlement agreement, it kind of blows up the whole deal. We saw this in the Equifax class action where they offered up to $150 per person whose privacy rights were violated when Equifax completely screwed the pooch in terms of user privacy. And then so many people signed up to get the $150, it broke the bank and the parties had to go back to the drawing board again. And theoretically, since I'm publicizing this video, that might happen here too. Yeah, sorry about that. But effectively, this is the same process that everyone goes through in class action settlements. It starts with notifying the potential class, usually through email, but maybe it's through the telephone, using these janky notices that look like a scam. Then you have to go to these websites that look like they came out of GeoCities in 1994. And you then have to provide your personal information to sign up for the class on the hopes that you'll get some sort of payout from the settlement agreement. And of course, then you have to wait for the court to approve the final settlement. And then and maybe a year or two later, you might actually get a check in the mail or some virtual dollars deposited into your virtual bank account. It takes a very, very long time. And while we spilled the tea about class actions, I'd never spill my cup of coffee because I get my coffee from Trade. After all, a lawyer is only as good as their last cup of coffee. Trade is great not only because they have a huge selection of your favorite coffees, but they also have a fantastic quiz to get you matched up with coffee recommendations based on your personal preferences. I have a very specific taste in coffee. Basically, I want something that tastes like hot chocolate and pairs well with milk, lots and lots of milk and sugar. And Trade was able to find me a perfect roast. And now since the weather is getting warm, they have a huge selection of cold brews as well. With Trade, you can discover new coffees from the nation's top roasters. Trade matches you to your own personal selection of coffee and conveniently delivers it directly to you. And if you know what you like, they probably already have your favorite roaster in stock at a fantastic price. So if you'd like to try Trade Coffee, Legal Eagles will get 50% off of their first bag when they sign up and get free shipping. Just click on the link in the description, take the quiz and choose your frequency, whether you want one bag or a subscription and then rate your coffee so your suggestions get even better. You can even choose whole beans or your preferred grind. It's really the best coffee website out there. So get 50% off your first order by clicking on the link in the description or use the promo code legal50 at checkout. Plus clicking on that link really helps out this channel. So do you agree with my analysis? Class actions, coffee, whatever. Leave your objections in the comments and check out this other Legal Eagle video here. I think you'll really like it. So click on this video or I'll see you in court.